This is your typical garage door opener. But imagine if it could sound something like this. And it's not just quieter. In fact, this garage door opener doesn't require any ceiling space at all. Now that can be ideal because many people are using storage systems that can now mount in the center of their garage. But in my project, this thing is even more important because I don't even have a ceiling. This used to be a horse barn. They keep the hay upstairs and they toss it down to the animals in the middle. So allow me to introduce you to the most innovative garage door opener you can buy today. Now the model isn't important. Nothing in this video is sponsored. It's the type of opener that's important. This model is called a Jack shaft opener. It all starts with the type of setup you've got. The spring you're looking at here is called the torsion spring and this is the exact setup you can use for a jack shaft system. Now you can retrofit this to an existing system or even replace a standard ceiling mounted opener. Normal openers have those chains, belts, or even a screw drive, but this system is very clever. It uses the very rod that turns the garage door. And because the torsion spring is creating the energy to help lift or close the door, I'm able to simply rotate it by using my hand. This is exactly what a jack shaft garage door opener does. It will clamp onto the end of this pipe and it will rotate it in the same way I was using my hand. This setup gives you some huge benefits. But to get started, you're going to need to figure out a place that you can mount the opener. The opener can be mounted on either the right or the left hand side of your garage door. Jack shaft type openers are considerably easier to install than a regular garage door opener. But if the pipe is too long, it won't make any difference. This coupler will put them together, but if there's extra pipe, it'll just slip inside the opener and it will not cause you any problems. These openers are mounted very differently. It just hangs on the pipe itself that drives the door, but then you will need to have one attachment point to your wall. Now that might seem a little bit weak, but that's all this opener will require to get some leverage while it's operating the door. Here's a common problem you'll run into with a simple fix. With the coupler on the side of the jack shaft opener, I couldn't actually slide it into position. So you just simply have to take that coupler, slip it onto the pipe itself. That gives you full clearance to slide the opener into position, and then you can simply slide the coupler onto the jack shaft drive itself. With everything loosely in place, you'll just need to tighten these bolts down, but before you do, you want to ensure that you have at least an eighth to a quarter inch of clearance between the coupler and your bearing. You'll notice my bearing is a little bit askew, but I've still got plenty of clearance for the coupler, so I'm going to move on with the installation. All these openers use these square headed drive screws. Now these can be a little confusing, but a simple way to put them in is to use a 12 point socket. But if you don't have one of these 12 point sockets, you can just slip a wrench in there and just take a little bit more time to tighten them down securely. Next, the directions say that you should level the opener. Now keep in mind, this thing can be leveled to and from the wall and also left and right. But because it is clamped onto the pipe with a coupler, you can only move it just so much. But this bracket slides back and forth, so at the very least, you can certainly level the opener correctly to the wall. With it looking level, you've just got to tighten that bracket to the wall. Now they do include these screws in the kit. These are pretty beefy and you can just use a power screwdriver and I recommend using your impact setting if you've got it. This is all that's required to securely mount this thing to the wall and the drive rod. On the opener itself is this cover. Once you flip it up, you've got access to some programming buttons along with the wiring connectors. This is where we'll connect our control panel, safety sensors, but most importantly, we're going to connect the best security feature this opener has to offer. This is an electronic deadbolt. Most garage doors have a mechanical deadbolt like this. You just slide it in position and your door is secure. But imagine if this deadbolt could operate automatically each time the door was opened or closed. Well, that's exactly what this electronic deadbolt does. And regular garage doors can be forced open with something as simple as a coat hanger. But by using this electronic deadbolt, these jack shaft openers are completely is... secure. Now you may have to drill a hole in the side of your existing bracket system, but that's easy to do by using this included label. You'll drill three holes in total. Two small ones are used for the mounting screws and the middle hole will be for the deadbolt itself. By marking the metal first with a punch, it made it easy to drill with a small bit. But to enlarge these holes, I'm going to use what's called a step bit. This will give you a really clean result and you can keep stepping the bit into the hole until you get the exact size you need. And with our holes in place, we've just got to screw our deadbolt in position. Now this thing is also designed so that it can be installed on either the right or the left hand side of the door. And that black lever is a manual override. Fortunately, this deadbolt is the only item we have to mount. There used to be something called a cable tensioner that was required on all jack shaft openers. But fortunately, this new Chamberlain model eliminated that completely. 
Because these walls are open, I'm gonna go ahead and drill a couple of holes and I can fish the wire for the deadbolt right up to the opener and keep it a little bit neater. And these wires don't have to be pulled inside a wall. You can just tack them right to the outside because they are low voltage connections. With our deadbolt mechanism plugged into the appropriate connector, we're ready to move on to the control panel itself. This kit included the necessary wire and it is just two conductors, but they are polarity sensitive, meaning you do have to be aware of the red and the white color on the wire. Strip a small amount of the conductor and you'll want to loop the ends of the wire and then just connect them to the appropriate ends of the back of the control panel. When you're placing this against your wall, there is a small cutoff for the wire, so you're not gonna pinch it by mistake. You'll wanna route it inside this small channel and then go ahead and screw that control panel button to the wall. Connect the red and white wires to the red and white terminals on the inside of the opener. If you're retrofitting an older door, you've probably got these safety sensors already installed and they can generally be reused. Here, this kit does include two new ones and with this being a newer door, I need to install these at about six to eight inches off the ground. These sensors have two LEDs inside using an infrared light that creates a beam. If anything should interrupt it, it'll automatically reverse the garage door. These things can be adjusted and bent slightly to get them fully aligned, but you're gonna find that this beam is quite wide and they often don't need any adjustments at all. Here's a pro tip that can really save you some aggravation in the future. Coil up a little bit of extra wire around something like a pipe, even a tube of chapstick. This will give you a much more professional result and that extra bit of wire can save you down the road. If you've gotta change one of those sensors out and you've got everything stapled down tight, now with that extra wire, you can easily replace the sensor down the road without any bit of trouble and I'm eventually getting that wire up into the opener itself. Each one of the sensors are gonna have two separate ends, but this manufacturer specifies that you put both wires together. So connect both blacks and both whites together, and then you'll match up the colors into these terminals. At this point, our wiring is complete, and I can plug in the electric outlet and see if this thing is actually working. Now the very first item you want to check are the safety sensors. One is going to be amber and the other one will be green. And you want to put your hand in front of the beam to make sure that they start blinking or some models might just turn off. Next you will need to do some basic programming. What makes this opener really universal is you can program different types of doors. That means they can be lightweight, insulated, uninsulated, solid wood or even steel. The system can adjust the different types of weight. You've just got to pick the type of door you have and that's done by pressing a certain number of buttons and now it'll automatically do a test run to see if the door can open and close correctly. This thing is quiet. If your garage doors are underneath a bedroom or a living area, you will hardly even notice the motor running. But this electric motor is also DC powered as opposed to a regular AC motor. That's important because the motor can slow down and speed up. So this opener will actually slow down just as it begins to close the door. That eliminates all that banging and noise you'd normally get from a regular opener. Now one disadvantage with a jack shaft opener is you do need to have an electric outlet near where you're going to mount it. You could certainly run an extension cord, but that's not generally going to be recommended. As close to the opener as possible to eliminate any kind of cords. And if the power should go out, they've also included this safety cord. This cord just simply attaches to the bottom of the opener, but it requires a lot more pulling force. That means no one is going to be able to just stick a coat hanger inside your garage and easily open up your door. Here's how you open a jack shaft opener if there's a power outage. Slide the deadbolt manually to the open position, give a really strong pull on that safety cord, and now the door operates manually. To reset it, just close the door. You can go ahead and pull that safety cord again, but you'll notice that the door really isn't in the right position. Just simply open it once electrically and close it, and everything will reset to the original positions. You also get this included wireless LED light. Now by wireless, I don't mean that it doesn't require electricity. It just doesn't need a cable to connect to the opener. Plug it into any electric outlet nearby. It mounts easily with just two screws, and I'm gonna put it near the opener, and this will give me enough light when I'm pulling it inside or out of the garage. Now I didn't have to program anything to make this work. Everything was pre-set up from the factory. So as soon as I open up the door, the light came on, and it will automatically shut off after a certain amount of time, but you can manually operate the light as well with the wall mounted control panel. Another awesome feature of this garage door opener and a lot of other ones is it's part of the on cue system. That means that you can use the included remote or the wall control panel, but my favorite way is to use the free app. You just simply program it, which takes just a few seconds. It doesn't require you getting back to the opener. You just answer a few questions. It will ask you what type of button you have on the wall. It tells you exactly what to press. And within just a couple of minutes, I can now access my garage door opener from anywhere in my house or even outside of the house using the internet.
You might think that doesn't matter, but this app is very useful because it can also show you if the door is open or closed. So if you wanted to check to see if you accidentally left it open, this app is critical. But if you don't want any type of internet connectivity, just don't install it, and there's no ability to get to your garage door remotely. If you're gonna get a name brand garage door opener, you're gonna spend between three and $400. This Chamberlain model that I ordered was $449, so if it's time to replace your garage door opener and you wanna step up your game a bit, get a quieter door and a more secure one, the jack shaft style opener is definitely one to consider. And if you've got better ideas on garage door openers, be sure to leave me a comment below. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.